the scroll doesn't want diamonds I want plants hey everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is Brittany you can call me bolts and today I'm gonna to be sharing my entire plant collection with you guys the last time I counted I had about 40 plants I started getting much more into plants gardening and botany about two years ago I really started my plant collection about four years ago and it's just grown ever since but the past year or so I've spent a lot of my free time and I've spent a lot of time off social media and I've just chose to kind of dive into gardening and botany because there's so much to learn and I feel like I'm always learning something new I have a handful of plants that are sentimental to me I've had them almost Almost as long as I've had my dog Stella who's four so they have started to become a little bit sentimental I've loved this hobby because it is very much so a trial and error type of hobby I cannot tell you the amount of plants that I have sadly killed I know I'm a murderer not on purpose it's just kind of one of those hobbies that you have to buy a new plant and figure out what it needs and hopefully it'll survive at the end of the video I'm going to share with you a couple of my favorite books that have taught me a lot about plants and I'm also going to share with you my favorite youtubers I have watched hours and hours and hours of houseplant YouTube videos Videos, and that's mostly where I've learned all this information. Thanks for clicking on this video. I'm going to start the tour in my entryway. There's a lot to cover, so let's go. Unfortunately, it's been very stormy here lately. We're still in the middle of hurricane season here in Florida, so it's very dark in my apartment. I don't have as much natural light as I was hoping today for this video, but I still wanted to make it and show you guys my plant collection before my new puppy, Sierra, eats more of my plants. We'll get into that later. This is the entryway to my apartment, and I already have a few plants. This right here is what's called a corn plant. I've had this for about a year. I thought it looked really cool in the entryway. Here in my workspace office area, I have two plants. They are two thriving pothos. I have quite a few pothos plants just because they are so hardy and they are definitely a beginner plant. You really can't kill pothos. If you want to get into house plants, start with that. That's probably the most common. I have so many pothos plants because it's very easy to propagate, so I've been propagating a lot. I wanted to show you my beautiful new painting that Bay got for me for my early birthday present. My birthday is this weekend on November 14th and we went to the Pensacola Seafood Festival and got me that beautiful painting and and I think it goes so well in here with the plants and all the other paintings So thank you, babe. Love you. I've had this corn plant for about a year now It survived moving across the country. It survived moving from LA to Florida and most of my plants actually survived Which is so amazing. I would love to do a video on how to move your live house plants across the country because I did it and was actually very successful. I only lost about five plants, so I would say that that's a major win. These two pothos plants I've had since about June this year. Um, the vines have started to get very long, but um, yeah, they're beautiful. This one's much more variegated. We'll move over here to my one kitchen plant. I don't get a lot of sunlight in my kitchen, so not much will survive over here. But I do have more pothos that is just sitting in water right now. It's propagating. I have this vine trailing up here. It's grown quite a lot since I moved here. I think it was only reaching to there. Like, I could barely get it to reach to that hook. My little soft friend, I love you. Well, I'm very excited about these two avocado trees that are growing. I put these in water about, it was right after I moved here, so it was about in July. I put this one in water about three weeks before this one on the left. You can see here this one is just starting to get its leaves. And this one down here already has two leaves, almost a third, and another little stalk coming up down here. But the roots just look so cool. They're just spiraling around in the water, and I'm probably gonna wait till springtime to plant these in any kind of soil. I'm excited, in 10 years I'll have an avocado, hopefully. Over here I have this 
what I think is a snake plant. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. I can't remember. My mom got it as a gift for me, but look at the side here. It is growing this fat baby on the side, and I'm actually gonna spin it around and keep it like that, but oh my gosh, I was so excited. And the trick to this is I kind of neglect it, to be honest. So I haven't looked at this in a couple weeks and it's grown like double in size. We'll come over here to this little wall. So I have two croton plants that are here on the outside. Uh, when I originally bought this, I bought this a couple months ago and it was in one plant. So it was a really big plant and honestly it was just outgrowing the pots that it was in. So I decided to separate it into two plants. They aren't in the prettiest of planters. I need to kind of work on that. I kind of went overboard with the plants and didn't get cute planters. So um, I'm gonna start looking for those maybe in the springtime, but I probably won't be re potting any plants anytime soon just because it is November although I might change my mind because I live in Florida so I don't really know if the same rules apply for winter but yeah here's more pothos here's another pothos plant uh, my mom gave this to me it actually had a corn plant in the middle of it, it was one of those plants from Home Depot, but the corn plant died. So all that's left is the pothos, but I love pothos. I think they're beautiful. Here is my beautiful bird of paradise. It has almost doubled in size since I got it. I got it back in May of this year. It just came out with this brand new leaf. So beautiful, bright green, very shiny. Um, I'm so happy with how it's doing. I've never had a bird of paradise before, but it seems to be thriving. So I'm really happy about that. More pothos. So this pothos plant right here is actually one of the sentimental plants that I have. It has been with me for about three years. This is the pothos plant that lived with me in the basement of a sorority house and it survived so if it can get through that then it can probably get through anything but it has pretty much doubled in length this vine right here since i moved to florida in july and this has too so it's thriving it loves florida it really likes it here so this over here is kind of an awkward area i told you guys in my last video that i had to move a lot of my house plants in from my screened in patio because there's a hurricane and it also started to get kind of cold at nighttime here like down in the 50s 40s so i wanted to bring all my plants in because i didn't want them to freeze so things are a little bit crowded i need to get some more furniture and plant stands to put them on but i'll worry about that later this here is my gorgeous monstera it is so big and thriving it had at least five new leaves on it let's see we have here one two three four this one got a little wilted i know there's one more oh i think five i think that's it's this one but all a couple weeks ago they just sprouted out and i was looking at this plant today there are actually two more leaves that are getting ready to come out here one right here and then we have another one down here somewhere oh right there it's just poking out i'm just i just get so fascinated by this you guys like most of the time i get really busy and just forget about my plants to be honest with you but every couple weeks i'll look at them and be like oh my god you have a new leaf and i almost die back here this poor bamboo plant is a little bit secluded a little bit hidden but this is a beautiful bamboo plant that my grandparents gave to me when I moved into this apartment and it has a really cute planter. Not sure if you can see, I'm sorry about how dark my apartment is, but I've had that since about July, I guess too, so not too long. I have my beautiful ZZ plant right here that survived the cross country move. I'm so proud of you, baby, I love you. And here's my dragon tree plant. I know the official name, but I just can't remember. I think it's Dracaena marginetta. Um, I'm really awful with pronunciation. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm trying my best. So don't come for me, please. These two are very happy. I've had this dragon tree since May. 
I went a little overboard um, when I moved here. So I'm really sad. This is my current um, screened in patio situation. The hurricane really, really messed us up and they still haven't come to fix it, which that's fine. But out here I have the not so good plants. Um, as I mentioned, Sierra, my new puppy, she likes to chew on plants. So rest in peace to my aloe vera plant. I'm actually really sad about this because I was ferried. I was plant ferried after I moved to Florida, which you join these plant groups on Facebook and people will literally leave plants at your doorstep for you and it's so awesome. This was the first plant that was ever plant ferried to me and well, Sierra decided to eat it. So um, luckily it's not poisonous. It didn't hurt her or anything. I found her before she did too much damage but then again I'm surprised it's still kind of alive. I don't really know if you'd call that being alive but and over here, this is a really sad looking fern. This is the first fern I've ever had and the first I've ever killed. So I haven't really quite figured out the ferns yet. Um, yeah, I should probably throw that away, but I don't really want to give up on it yet. Like maybe it'll have a comeback. I don't see any new growth on it. It's just kind of a mess. So let's just leave that out here. Bye. <laughs> Here in my hallway, I don't get a lot of sunlight, so here's just another pothos vine. They do so well in low light areas, so that's another reason why I have so much of it. But this is just a vine I stuck into water. Um, do you remember the two pothos plants that I showed you in my office area? This vine actually came off of the non-variegated one, and the weirdest part is now it's becoming variegated on its own. So I'm really not sure how that happens, but I'm not mad about it. I think it's beautiful. Over here next to my bathroom, I have another very crowded plant corner. Um, this corner gets a little bit of natural light just because the window to my bedroom is facing it. So it gets a little bit of light, but I mostly have low light plants over here. Here is my snake plant. This was originally one plant and I split it into two after I moved here. The snake plant was another plant that survived the cross country moves. So I'm so proud of you, baby. And there's some new, new little plant babies growing in each one. So it's thriving, it loves this corner. Here is my weeping fig. Now it looks really, really sad. It also moved with me from LA to Florida, and while it doesn't look quite beautiful anymore, um, it's still pretty, and I know that it will bounce back. All these leaves are new, so when it arrived in Florida, it had zero leaves on it. I almost threw it away, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna let it sit, I'm gonna let it sit in the humidity, give it a couple weeks, and it sprouted out all these new leaves. So there's hope for it. I know it will grow into a beautiful, luscious, weeping fig again, but for now, it's it's doing its best, so. Now, this here is my favorite pothos plant out of all of them. I love it because it just has these very prominent stripes of variegation in it. And I love the way it's just growing. I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like just such a beautiful artistic plant. The way it's growing out to the side, I don't know that's what gets me going if you're a plant person you'll understand all these things that gets me so excited and i hope that i have some subscribers that understand me because this stuff is just i love it i love it i love plants here we are in my very very messy bathroom i'm gonna try my best to not show you the messy countertop but i have two plants in here i don't get much sun in here again so there's no window. I have this beautiful pearls and jade pothos. It's just a different kind of pothos. Um, obviously the leaves look quite different. They look super variegated. They look a lot lighter than the pothos. I have been having a little bit of trouble with some of my plants. I know it is fall so I've had some of my plants drop more leaves than usual. It's very normal for plants to lose leaves but um, if you see here, this little section here fell off of this plant and I was really sad so I tried to stick it in here but it looks like it's just rotting and not doing very well so 
we're just gonna sadly, oh yeah, that's a goner. We're just gonna throw that one away <laughs> and here I have another pothos cutting that will be ready to put in the soil here soon. I like the roots to grow quite a bit before I put them into the soil just so it doesn't shock it so much. All right, we're getting there. We're in the final room, my bedroom. I've actually moved a good majority of my plants into my bedroom just because it's the room that has the most sunlight, so the plants do the best in here. Here is a quick kind of overview, if you will, of the plants in my room. So I have quite a few, one over there. Let's start over here at the window. So, lot, a lot of variety over here. Let's start with my most important and most special plant. This is probably the plant that I've become most attached to emotionally. It is a dumb cane plant, aka Diffenbachia. It is toxic to animals, so I've kept it off the floor just because, like I said, Sierra likes to eat my prized possessions. So, Anyways, I have these up off the floor. If you're gonna get a dumb cane plant, just note that they are toxic to dogs. And this is what happened. In college, I was working at the Social Security Administration for a while, and I had a manager who was very, very into house plants. We had tons of plants in our office, and that's kind of what sparked my passion for getting more into house plants, I guess. And she gave me this cutting of a Diffenbachia plant. I had no idea what it was before, but I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the leaves and she gave me this huge stalk that had fallen off. I think someone knocked the plant over or something, but anyway, it broke off the mother plant and so she gave it to me to propagate and it propagated in water for about a year. And this is one of the plants that I moved from LA to Florida. I've had this plant for about three years now. When I packed up my plants, stuff got shifted around and basically in the u-haul box is where i packed all my plants this plant got bent so this is the base of the plant and this is what snapped off of it so i was repotting it once it got here to florida so that i could save it give it some new life I repotted it and I accidentally snapped off the entire top of the plant. So when I snapped it off, these leaves were not there. It was just this trunk and it looked like a penis plant or something, like I don't know. And so anyways, I was devastated. I started crying and I reached out to all my Facebook plant groups and ask them, what can I do? And they're like, girl, don't worry, you just plant it in dirt and you have another plant. Like you just doubled your favorite plant. And I was like, okay, I'll wait and see what happens. And so a few weeks later, two little nodes started poking out and voila, a couple months later, it has so <laughs> many new leaves. They're beautiful. It has two new leaves that are gonna be unwrapping here in a couple weeks. I. I'm so happy. This plant breaking in half was probably the best thing to ever happen to it. It's thriving now. It's really happy where I planted it and it loves this little sunlight here. So there's that. We'll jump over here to finish talking about this plant. So I literally just stuck the top of it into water and I didn't think that it would root or anything, but it did. It took a few weeks, but it finally did. And why I was so devastated about it was because this is the size of the leaves on all the plants. So since then they have died, but now this is the size of the new leaves. About half the size, but still vibrant, still beautiful. This one just came out. So in the springtime, I'll plant that, but I love this plant. I love it so much and it is so special to me. I don't know why I'm so emotionally attached to these plants. I don't think it's healthy, but there's worse things to be addicted to, so there's that. Here's another plant that survived the cross-country move. It is a, another Monstera. Um, I feel awful, I didn't try to cover up my mom's photos of me and her up here, but I needed something to prop this plant up on. I saved this plant from root rot about a month ago. It was twice the size and about a month ago a bunch died off because I was watering it too much and I had to replant it and 
I saved it from root rot. It's doing well now and this new leaf just popped up about last week. So she's thriving. She's not a hundred percent like I'm not gonna cut her off though. Like she's still beautiful. She's got this, she's got new growth, so I'm really happy about that. Over here is my money tree. Well, what's left of it? My money tree was one of the victims that Sierra decided to eat as a snack. So this was about twice as full. It had a bunch more leaves over here. I kind of spun it around because I'm trying to hide it. It lost about half of its volume, but it's still thriving. It has new growth on it, so I'm not too worried. That's what the baby leaves look like before they get bigger and they kind of start laying flat. It goes like that and then comes out and lays flat like the other ones. There's new growth right there and there's some tiny growth over there and here. You can't see much, but I love this tree. I bought it in... July or August. Over here I have one of my corn plants. I have twin plants that are like this. So I have my corn plant and there's pothos down in the bottom. Um, the pothos is not thriving and I haven't figured out why. It's really, really sad, but the corn plants seem to be doing okay. I had to move them into my room because they weren't getting enough sun on the patio or in my living room. So that's why they're in here. This one over here is a tiny bit smaller and most of the pothos vines are gone because of, well, Sierra. So I love her, but I love my plants too. So she's gonna have to learn not to eat my plants. The problem was is I left her out while I was sleeping and that was just a mistake. She's a puppy. She doesn't need that responsibility yet. So kind of my own fault. Over here, I have surprise, surprise, more pothos. Um, this one's very unique just because of the way it's growing. It kind of has not figured out which way it wants to grow yet. And it's had new growth all over the place. The most recent growth came from right here, which is just at the base of the plant. So these popped up within the past few weeks, these little tiny leaves over here. But again, really pretty variegation. And I've had this pothos for a long time too. So I love you. Right here in the middle of it all is my cute little kangaroo paw fern. I bought this back in May and I thought it was really, really cute. I don't see any new growth to show you, but the way that this plant grows is really, really cool. They grow from the middle and they are kind of all spiraled up and then it just grows tall and then it unravels slowly. So um, I don't see any new growth on this plant to show you, but um, it looks really cool. It's still doing well, it's still thriving. This girl is very, very dramatic. When she needs to be watered, you will know. And same with the croton plants that I was showing you in the living room, the colorful ones, they are also very, very dramatic. Um, if you don't get to them right away, they will most likely die but the good thing about them is they always tell you when they need to be watered over here i have my four little pothos plants they're quadruplets i propagated these when i was a senior in college and it was my first propagation project so it was like really special to me and the first time i had ever like really tried to propagate by myself and they're just thriving they're doing really well they also survived the move from la to florida so they're doing really really well they have about doubled in size in the past year, so I'm gonna have a lot, a lot of pothos on my hands before I know it. Back here in this little corner, I have my most prized orchid. I've had this orchid for almost as long as I've had Stella, about four years. This is one of the first plants I've been able to keep and hold on to. It is looking a little bit sad. I really need to replant this, but 
To be honest with you, I don't know a ton about planting orchids yet. They have different requirements than normal plants. They don't use regular soil as you can see, so I'm probably going to try to replant this in the spring, but it has a new leaf there, and since I moved here, it actually sprouted out another leaf too. So that's the second leaf that it's grown since I've lived in Florida, so she's doing really well. She hasn't bloomed in a while. She bloomed back when I lived in LA, but since then we don't have any blooms, but I know she will soon. Here's my other orchid. It's a baby, baby orchid, and it's very cute. My mom got it for me, and I think I've had this for a few months. I believe I got it after I moved here to Florida. She's doing really well. She does not like to stay in her little pot. So every few weeks I have to come over here and like tuck her little her roots in into her pot because she's she's trying to escape. So she's probably ready for a new one, but again, I'm going to have to learn more about orchids and I'll plant them at the same time into different pots. So there she is. This is my baby peperomia plant. You guys, I wanted a peperomia for so long. She's supposed to be marble, but I thought that means that they're variegated, but she's not variegated. But I wanted a peperomia plant for so long, I finally got one. This is just one of the little like $3 plants that they sell at Walmart. So I got this after I moved here. I've had it since July, so she's doing really well. They do require more light. I think they require medium light. Yeah, they do require more light, so that's why I have her sitting in the window, but she's very happy here. She's had a little bit of new growth, but not too much. The most important thing is she hasn't had any leaves fall off, so I'm happy about that. All right, you guys, that was my entire plant collection. If you've watched to this point, thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned before, this is something that I'm very, very passionate about and have been spending a lot of time learning about. So it makes me really happy to get to share that with you guys. I mentioned earlier in the video that I was going to share some books and some of my favorite plant YouTubers with you guys just because this is what I've learned everything from from reading books, watching YouTube videos, and literally just killing a lot of house plants, unfortunately. Um, a lot of my plants have died. Some of the plants that died in the move across country from LA to Florida were my beloved spider plant. I also lost my African mask plant. Let's see, my fiddle leaf fig, gone. Um, I know there's a few others. I had some succulents too, um, they're gone. <laughs> uh, we did lose a few, but kept most of them. So it's all, it's all a learning process. Like I said, I'm not a genius. I'm very much a beginner plant hobbyist, so this is just what I've learned. Here's some of the books that I've found most helpful that I've read all the way through, and I'll link them down below so that you can go buy them on Amazon or whatever, but this one is probably, I don't want to say the dullest book, but this taught me more than any of the other books. Um, these two books I have in my hand are more picture books. They help a lot with visuals. This is more of a textbook, sciencey book. This really broke down the actual science and the botany of how plants grow. And I read this all the way through this past summer. It was really really good really helpful it's called botany for gardeners the third edition by brian capon this one does have pictures and diagrams and stuff like that it's more of textbook but it's more wordy it has a lot of words but it was very easy to read um i just read it out by the pool this summer these two books i really like because they're specifically for indoor plants they're complete guides for how to style, how to care for your plants, um, all about choosing, growing, and caring for indoor plants. So this first one is called Wild at Home, and it's really cute. It has a lot of really beautiful pictures. I take a lot of my inspo from this book, but it is by Hilton Carter. 
so I will link that down below. This book talks about a lot of really cool stuff like how to make your own terrarium and stuff like that. So just really, really helpful um, information for you to have. And like I said, I love the pictures in it. Really, really cool. This book has been the most helpful book and it's called House Plants. It's by Lisa Eldred Skyne. Cough. I'm so sorry if I butcher that name, but I got this from Amazon and I think the other books I got from Amazon too So like I said, I'll link it below But if you can see all the tabs here every time I get a new house plant I look in this book because it's literally an Encyclopedia of like indoor plants. So it has from A to Z um, You know most difficult plant. Oh here. Oh my god. I opened it right up to that plant earlier it is a bird's nest snake plant. Okay, so I was close, I was close. All right, anyways, I'm getting distracted. So I love it because it sorts the plants from easy to care for to hardest to care for. It has the botanical name, light preference, what you need to do for watering, um, if they flower, how to propagate, and the size. So I'll give you guys this example. This is a pothos plant so it just gives you so so much information and this is what's helped me keep most of my plants alive so there's that one this is the last book that I have that is more of an encyclopedia I have not read through this entire book but it's really really cool it's kind of more of a coffee table book but it talks all about gardening how to plan out a garden outdoors so this isn't too much of an indoor plant, but it's an encyclopedia of all garden plants. So, and it's really cool because it goes over hardiness zones, which is very helpful. And yeah, uh, how to identify plant groups. These books are what I've learned most of my information from. And my favorite plant YouTuber, her name is Plantarina. I believe her first name is Amanda. I'll link her channel down below. I've probably watched every single one of her plant videos like not to sound creepy or weird but I truly like I want to be her like I want her life <laughs> her house is so beautiful she has so many amazing plants and she has just turned plants into a career for herself which I think is amazing she's really cool so go check her out Plantarina she is like the plant plug. She will teach you everything that you need to know about houseplants. She is what I've learned most of my stuff from. That and reading. So this is probably going to end up being kind of a long video. So if you watch to this point, thank you truly. As I said, this is one of my very big passions and it makes me really happy that I can combine social media and plants, two of my very big passions to share with you guys. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. I'm going to be posting weekly videos on YouTube. So turn those notifications on and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat chat as well. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you next week. Mwah.